back on the what is that thing back on the impala been rolling out some videos on this thing trying to get it ready for the season to start and mostly power tour or whatnot uh we've covered the rear suspension the new trailing arms the new upper link drop springs we've covered all the steering components for the front now this is probably one of my favorite upgrades so far of what we're doing it was much needed well maybe much needed but uh the 50 dollars craigslist specials that i had on the front the brakes i bought last last april served me served me well did fantastic 50 bucks can't beat it and i never noticed this until i was sitting here one day just looking at the car and i had to do a little reading but that style of disc brake setup actually pushes the track width out well over an inch per side. So if you look down the car, it kind of looked like a Chevrolet truck, a four-wheel drive Chevrolet truck with the, the front track width all jacked up and the back sucked in. That was kind of driving me crazy. And then it needed a passenger rotor. That inside rotor was thin. I don't know why. None of the, the outside and the driver's side rotor looked good. And I wanted to go lower, but I didn't want to drop. I didn't want to cut the springs anymore because I felt like I was kind of pushing it as it was, as far as as much as much drop as I had going on with those stock springs. So saved up my milk money and uh, bought some fresh brakes. Got from CPP. Um, I got their two-inch drop spindle, low offset. It's like an eighth per side, so it's probably can't even see it an eighth per side and it runs a third gen Camaro one LE rotor. So it gives you a 12 inch rotor and it's got a Willwood D 52 caliper, a two piston caliper. And this is what we're going with. So it comes, uh, I just laid the the caliper on there just to look at it, but the rotor already comes loaded to the, to the spindle, pre-greased nuts already there. So none of that fiddling around. It, uh, I mean, it's going to be pads and then, uh, braided brake line, some doodads, crush washer, the bolt, all that stuff. But, uh, we're going to, uh, get this side slapped on and just, just keep making progress. Before April 1st, it needs to be on the road and, uh, riding around. So, I need to get this done this week, this weekend and get it ready to go for an alignment real soon. So let me get my tools out, get set up, and uh, we'll stick you somewhere and get this stuff put together, so. I got this uh, nifty magnetic GoPro mount, so I'll stuck you up in the side of the fender there. Hello. So uh, hopefully you can see this. Not, we'll have no footage, so. But uh, those ball joint boots I bought, I looked the other day, they don't fit. So, you know, I don't know why I was surprised they didn't fit, because that's just typically how it goes. And that thing's loose. Oh well. All right. Uh, sucker heavy. I'm gonna pull this caliper off just so. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna pull this caliper off just so uh, it's not there. We'll throw it over there in the box. Yeah, I didn't know anything about 1LE brakes until I got these. And then I got to reading on them because I had to know then. So, like, I think it was 88 to 92. Certain IROX, WS6, Trans Am, whatever, had a 1LE brake package option, which was a 12 inch rotor, two piston cast aluminum caliper, and rear disc. 
Did not know that. I imagine that's a holy grail in the third gen world. Alright, this is always fun. You know, I guess I could have hung them. These things are heavy. Alright. Let's let him dangle there. This castle nut where I can find it. The spring sits in there first. I didn't get wrenches. Good job. I'm just going to lightly snug everything for the time being. Come back and lock it all down. Once we check everything out, let's tie a rod in.
leave it right there for the time being. And this. Got the caliper. It's got bleeder screws on both ends so it could be a driver's side or a passenger side caliper. Either way. Let's see. Push these sleeves into the caliper. There's O-rings in there that hold it. Side pad. This is your inside pad. This will be your outside pad. Little ears drop into those. See those slot or those holes right there? Drop into that. We'll set the caliper on there. And uh, we'll stick this this pin in and should be able to slide this one I might be wrong but you could slide it in there stuck on a jack stand. I can't turn the wheel good. Oh no, the idler arms hit the jack stand. That's what it is. crush washers and a banjo bolt let's see now I'm not 100% on what direction this hose is going to want to land so we'll actually need to cycle the steering but the idler arm is all up in my way so I may just leave this loose for the time being cool I don't need that one a little cap off here so I'll just stick this through here and just do finger tight for the time being until I figure out, you know, will it be happier flipped up or will it be just fine down? I don't want it to kink when I cycle. So, well, yeah, I'm gonna have to move that jack stand over there. But let me move that jack stand and we'll cycle this and go from there. Competition products. 
your source for hardcore engine parts for street, strip, and oval track. Our free catalog is packed with hundreds of product lines from the best known manufacturers in the performance industry. Lowest prices guaranteed. Free shipping and handling on all orders over $149 in the continental U.S. Need expert advice? Our knowledgeable staff is just a phone call away. Competition product. Race parts sold by racers since 1970. All right, well, uh, this is probably one of those things where I probably need to put the wheels on it and set it on the ground and kind of see where it's at. But you can see, I mean, it doesn't kink and the A-arm is at full droop. So I think before I do any official done for plumbing and whatnot, that I'll, uh, I'll put it on its, on its feet. We'll kind of see where that, where that's gonna land us. I'm gonna start snugging all this stuff up, putting cotter pins in nothing real exciting I need to put all the grease fittings in the steering stuff too but uh i mean this is about as simple a kit as you can get rotors are already on the on the on the spindles and i did not expect that but i'm gonna get these things tightened up and uh i'll see where we're at then all right like i said earlier i was going to try to get the alignment the toe set close you know just where it wouldn't eat the tires off between here and wherever i go to get an alignment if i had two people which i've done it by myself with tape measure i don't have with one tape measure or two i don't have any toe plates if you don't know what those are i'll put a picture of toe plates up um, i should have a set of toe plates because they're not that much and I'm usually a tight wad and I don't go get an alignment and I usually do my junk myself. For the most part, it works out pretty good. But if you're alone, I have found that the run a string method or the dirt track alignment uh, works pretty good. My dad had a dirt car, so this was part of my, my, every, Friday, uh, my every Friday chore during the summer especially, or if I was there, was A, to groove tires and B, to run a string so this is the run a string when i do these 12 ton jack stands work real well because they're so heavy i can pull it real tight but basically all you're doing now like i said this is not this ain't exactly a hunter alignment you'll square the string off the back wheel evenly right so unless i've kicked this thing by accident which that happens That is roughly, looks like three and five eighths. Both sides, pretty close, you know. And then what I'll do is you'll try to get the steering wheel straight. That one, I've moved that steering wheel all over the place to try to get it straight from changing stuff before. So it's probably not going to be dead on, which I'll just take the steering shaft loose and move it over a spline and cheat the system that way. But then you just come to the front usually try to split the difference you know it was towed in earlier so i kind of got the toe in even on both sides that way when i go to adjust the tie rods you're adjusting both sides and not one side doing all the adjustment and then i'll just come up here to the front and i think they say it's a 16th or something like that on toe in but like i'm saying i'm just trying to get it close enough to go get an alignment because i want the camber set and i'll just keep measuring what does that say? Roughly three and three eighths. And one, three and five sixteenths. I'll get off the string. Three and five sixteenths. So it's towed in just a tad, which is fine. I mean, I'm not going far, you know. And you do this, you just do the same on both sides. No. I have the string run down this side too. Square it off the back rim and then do the same off the, you know, you just measure your distance. Um, so that's how I do it. It may not be right, but my Tacoma has been riding the same 33 1250s for the last six or seven years. And until I put, change the upper control arms, they actually wore just fine. And if you don't bounce them off trees, that kind of helps too, but that's how I've done it, and and I've done several other people's cars that way. Also figured out that my brake 
uh, my brake line routing. If you do it just like that, it'll be fine. It clears, um, it clears lock to lock. It doesn't bind or anything. But sadly, I got that that tire to fender clearance problem going on. I don't know why that side clears better than this side. Fender could be bent. I know it's bent at the bottom, so it might have bent it in the middle. I mean, it does, I don't know if you can see it, but if you look at that second lower molding right there, it does kind of, you know what I mean? It's not directly in line with the door. So this fender could be bent. I'm, I'm not opposed to bending this fender because I would really like to keep it this low. Looks good. My exhaust may not appreciate it, but I guess. And then it it appears that my panhard bar is is pretty close as far as having the rear end centered. So I'm gonna slide up under there, hit those jam nuts, get that thing locked down, get these get get these uh, blade. Uh, good lord, I'm all, obviously I'm alone, so I'll gravity bleed the brakes. And if you don't know what that is, then. Just crack the bleeder farthest away, fill the master with fluid, and just let it go until the, the air quits. Lock it down, pump it, let it go again. And for the most part, that's how I do all my brakes, and it seems fine. But that's where we're at. We'll leave off there. I got some more stuff coming. I was going to add to. I was at, I was going to add more to this video, but it's been like. A week now so uh i guess we would the wheelwood calipers the drop spindles uh whatever else we did to it the alignment that should be enough for a 20 minute video so uh i'm gonna close this one out we're gonna turn around and finish this other el camino video and uh we'll get going more we'll get going uh with some more content later this week on this don't know when you'll see the video but just trying to stay ahead of the game with these things um, thanks for watching Left 4 Dead Garage. We'll see you on the next one.